These seven principles, by the way, led to the greatest mistake I've ever made in my life, but I'll let you read them. Go ahead. <laughs> and know that it was the so, biggest mistake I've ever for made. For the dads watching, yeah. I'll look at each camera. For the dads watching, the thing about what I'm about to read is that these are things that if you're about to drop 50 grand on your school, on mm -hmm. University of Texas or University of Pennsylvania or anywhere in the country, you would think all of these are done as a matter of standard practice. And I should set this up you know, for, for the audience and for you. you know, the only advantage I had was I was an entrepreneur who had been both on the inside of the academy and seen how it really worked and been on the outside as an entrepreneur. So I had really been on the inside. And I was approached by then Lieutenant Governor Perry, who later became the governor for 14 years. And he said, we ought to really look at higher education and what could we do to make it better? And I wrote down one day on a napkin these seven very obvious ideas. I mean, they're embarrassing, they're so obvious. So first thing, you notice that 17 of you are basically teaching enough of the, and, and completely ludicrously outsized amount of the, of the student body. And in fact, in fact, we could have run the entire school for about 25 cents on the dollar, if you went through all the math. And that was, it was like, gee, what's the other 75 cents being spent on? It's going to a lot of heads doing a lot of questionable things. Yeah. So you say, okay, all right, future Governor Perry threw down a gauntlet. I'll take an afternoon. I'll write some things down. Seem pretty obvious to me. Yeah. Here they are. One, measure teaching efficiency and effectiveness. Okay. So we want people to teach and do a good job. We should measure if they are in fact doing that. Two, publicly recognize and reward extraordinary teachers. Three, split research and teaching budgets to encourage excellence in both. I had this, I went to Penn State. Yeah. There were sort of general classes that I took that were in giant auditoriums. And it was like the person at the front of the room giving the lecture clearly was like a physics researcher had no business being in a classroom. Right. And that doesn't mean, by the way, physics research is very important, right? Yeah. We should do, we have all the great physics researchers should be at the University of Texas doing the best physics research. We should just measure them separately. And if you can do both, Good for you. Okay. Um, require evidence of teaching skills for tenure. Because, as everyone inside the academy knows, you only get promoted because of research skills. And actually, for publishing articles in journals, no one reads in most cases. And uh, that's how you get promoted. And if you teach well, it is taken as pure evidence that you must not be a good researcher. Otherwise, you would not be wasting time as a teacher. And anyone inside the academy knows what I just said is true. Signs that you're a good teacher are indications that you're not valued actually at the institutional level. Like, yes. why are you such a good teacher? That means you must not be doing good enough research. Absolutely, absolutely true. Whew. Okay, use quote results-based contracts with students to measure quality. What does that mean? Well, this means I'm gonna promise you what I'm gonna deliver. We're gonna publish what the grading, and we graded harder than anyone else, but we're gonna have a contract that says, I promise to deliver these things. You will rate me based on that, not my popularity, not my good looks. We're gonna have very detailed of what my promise to you as a teacher. And these are the same kinds of contracts we have. And then uh, put state funding directly in the hands of students, which seems to be pretty straightforward, but what did you mean by that? Well, the, the University of Texas has a $2.2 billion budget, or it did last I checked. Only 300 million of that was came from tuition. So the idea was there's a whole bunch of money going on for a whole lot of different things. Let's just, instead of that budget getting all confused inside the university, let's just hand checks to the uh, scholarships to right. the students and allow them to spend it at any university they want. So we got this giant education budget. The way I like to think about that is just do that the GI Bill did. It's, GI Bill came home from the... It's okay. the GI Bill with scholarships. Give everyone a scholarship and let them vote with their feet. Yep. Okay. How dare you? How dare you oh. want the GI Bill for everybody? And then create results-based accrediting alternatives. Yeah. So the accreditation cartel in America is very anti-competitive. It's private institutions that have the right to spend government money, but they each have a certain geographic area of the country that they own. And it's used as an excuse not to innovate in higher education. And until that's fixed, we'll likely block most of the innovative things in higher ed. What does this word mean, accreditation? Do, well, it's, it, Do people even know what that is? Most people think it's a good housekeeping seal of approval. Oh, you're uh, accredited to stamp. Yeah, it's a l much longer discussion, but that's not what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of things, but that's not what it is. But it's mainly used to prevent innovation inside universities. And so all we were saying is until you break up that cartel, that government monopoly, then you're not going to have real results-based education and learning inside higher ed. You basically, at a prompt, write down what seems like a pretty straightforward set of things that if I could summarize are prioritize teaching 
and measure teaching and reward teaching and praise teaching. I'll make it even simpler than that. <laughs> Just be very clear about what you promise and deliver on your promises. Not much more complicated than that. And measure and measure what you promise to deliver. What is the response of the institutions well, of I, higher education I, I, in I'll, Texas? I'll fast forward this. through 10 years, the biggest mistake I ever made in my life, which was to get involved in politics, to where a courageous regent at the University of Texas named Wallace Hall discovered corruption that still exists at the university in uh, terms of admissions. Far bigger crisis than the Varsity Blues, which is the famous scandal we just had. It results in the president of the university resigning over the corruption. It results in someone shooting a high-powered rifle into our school on the day the president is fired or resigns. And, least, and this is not, when you say this, which school are you talking about here? Acton Academy, our K-12 school, full of, at the time, students. Someone shot a high-powered rifle into the school by accident. Uh, they never found out who shot the rifle. I had death threats. I had to carry, I carried a nine millimeter gun in my car because of that. Because basically, Wallace Hall and a group of people stumbled into an admissions crisis at the University of Texas, a mission scandal at the University of Texas. And so 10 years of politics, uh, 10 years of trying to reform the system, and at least I'll say that those of us, Governor Perry and Wallace and myself and the others involved, you know, accomplished nothing. If you enjoyed this video, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Jeff Sandifer. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.